Hello and welcome to the 10th lecture in this series looking at masonry construction. This lecture is going to look at lime mortar. So prior to 1925, um, most masonry walls and brickwork walls were heavy and solid construction and they were built using lime mortar. Walls were commonly, if they were made of brick, uh, two bricks thick or more and were not often found to be less than 215 millimeters which is the length of a brick. So the thickness of the wall meant that it was developing comparatively low stresses within the masonry and the stresses were well within the capacity of the lime mortar. This lecture is going to look at lime mortar and the materials it's made from and how it's used as a conservation material. From previous lectures we talked about mortar and lime mortar, like most other mortars, consists of three basic components. It has water to some extent, as we'll find out later, uh, sand and a binder. And the binder in lime mortar is, not surprisingly, lime. But what is lime? We talk about lime and we say that walls are pointed with lime mortar and this is made with lime mortar um, without actually really explaining what it is. So this lecture is going to look at, look at that as its first port of call. So I can tell you what it's not. It's not lime the fruit. It's a different sort of lime. The lime that we're talking about is derived from limestones and other rock which is rich in calcium carbonate. And there's a process that we can think about, a cycle, um, which is to do with lime. The first point in this cycle is taking limestone or other rock that's rich in calcium carbonate and putting it through a process called calcination. And this process requires that the stone is heated in a lime kiln to approximately 1000 degrees centigrade and that gets it red hot and effectively that drives off the carbon dioxide that's within the, the rock and the output of this is a material called quicklime and quicklime is a, a white powder, it's uh, very alkaline um, it would burn you badly if you touched it um, and that is calcium oxide and that's also used in food products. So if you're looking at things like bread or wraps, you'll find E529, which is quicklime. But to use quicklime, we would never really use that in its uh, raw form. It's uh, too dangerous and we actually need to turn it into something usable. So what we do is we slake it. Um, this is a process called hydration and effectively we're, we're adding water to it um, to, to change it from calcium oxide into calcium hydroxide. This is a process that's exothermic, exothermic. it puts out a lot, a lot of heat and it results in a white putty. Um, that's if a very pure limestone is used. We'll come on to purity later on. And to complete the cycle, this slaked lime, the calcium hydroxide, can absorb carbon dioxide from the air or from uh, small amounts dissolved in, in rainwater. And the resulting carbonation um, returns it back to calcium carbonate. So it's a cycle that uh, basically forms the same material over and over again. But the purity of the initial limestone is important to the type of lime produced. If we go through that cycle and we're using a very pure limestone, we produce what's called a non-hydraulic lime. And a non-hydraulic lime is a putty that sets in contact with the air. So that goes through the process of carbonation. And it's a, quite a long process. Um, the lime remains soft and breathable for a long period of time. And mortar made with non-hydraulic lime putty is recommended for soft stone 
and soft brick. Uh, because it sets with air, it needs to be kept in an airtight container. Against that, there's natural hydraulic line. These are powders and they're made from impure limestones, usually which contain clay or other impurities, and we refer to them as NHL. Um, and it sets through a process called hydrolysis, which is a reaction with water. NHL has a greater compressive strength and will set faster initial, initially compared to um, non-hydraulic lime. And it can also set in more extreme conditions, and it will set under water. So with that in mind, it needs to be kept dry. Hydraulic lime mortar is made from the uh, putty, the slaked lime putty, mixed with sand at a ratio of three parts sand to one part putty. And we wouldn't add any water. There's enough water within the, the putty. And that mix is then knocked up um, to blend the components together. And knocked up is the, the term for the process of chopping and moving it around and beating it and folding it. And if you think about mixing all the ingredients for a cake to make a dough, that's probably the, the process. For NHL mortar, we can mix that dry to a ratio of uh, two part, 2.5 parts sand, so slightly less sand, to one part NHL, and then we're going to slowly add water. And the amount of water we use depends on the wetness of the sand. A very dry sand needs more water, and wet sand needs less water, um, but nowhere near the amount of water that you would use to make a cement mortar. And traditionally, the sand from a local area would have been used to make mortars and this gives a very different color or hue to mortars depending on the color of sand and the area that the building is set. And lime mortar can range from an off-white down to a deepish red brown and it's not uncommon to also see larger grains of sand in the mortar surface um, which gives us clues as to the type of sand that was used. The properties of lime mortar we covered a little bit earlier on in um, one of the earlier lectures. Um, lime mortar has a more workable texture compared to cement mortar. That means it's more plastic and pliable, so it's easier to work into awkward joints. It remains workable for longer, and as long as we keep it sealed from the air so that it can't begin to, to harden, it can be knocked up again. So if it goes stiff, we can we can remix it to, to regain its uh, buttery consistency for a second time. It slowly develops strength, and this allows for a degree of flexibility, which can help any hairline cracks that uh, appear in the wall to heal. The process of repairing historic stonework has four stages. If we were to take a wall, and we look at the picture behind, going from uh, left to right, um, we would remove the old mortar back to a depth of between 10 and 15 millimetres. Um, we would then clean those exposed joints to remove any dust or loose material, and we can then press new mortar into those joints, bringing it flush with the face of the stone. So that's the centre part of the image. And then we would finish the joints either by rubbing them back with a brush or a hessian bag and uh, just making sure that we're, we're bringing it flush to the face of the stone and we're not creating any ledges. If we're not using the correct mortar, this can cause significant problems for older stonework, especially if we're, there's soft stone such as sandstone. Walls need to breathe and the mortar joints are an integral part of that process. The, the water is going to enter the wall through the, the mortar and it's also going to leave by evaporation through the mortar. So lime mortar is very good at this. It can absorb and emit moisture, but cement mortar is very hard, uh, very resistant to water, and it, and it can't participate in that same process. So repointing a lime built wall with cement will prevent moisture from escaping, and that can cause damage to the stonework. And in this image here, we see that um, 
the cement mortar is proud of the surface. It's um, the stonework is decaying behind it. Uh, over time, water is getting into the stone, and uh, through frost action, it's breaking apart the, the stonework. And eventually, this will cause stones behind to to, to fail entirely. There's also a problem with, of aesthetics if we're going to repoint with cement mortar. Um, patch pointing with cement mortar is often done with the best of intentions. Um, owners can have a concern that pointing is falling out or that cracks are appearing and they can march up to their building with a bag of cement and patch in small areas. Now, if it is small parts, it's unlikely to cause the same problems that were seen in the previous slide, but it's pretty unsightly, especially if it's done as badly as it is here. So in conclusion, traditional stonework and brickwork relies on the mortar to keep the wall breathable. Mortar is an integral part of this process. The mortar used in traditional construction was predominantly lime-based and made use of local sands which provided variations in colour. The process of making lime is complicated and required great skill and attention. Aspects which you should take from this lecture are that lime is derived from limestone rocks, that lime can be hydraulic or non-hydraulic, that lime mortar should be sacrificial to the surrounding stone, and that using the incorrect mortar can damage stonework. Okay, thank you very much for listening. If you've got any questions about this, please feel free to ask me during the studio session.